please give a very warm welcome to the athletes for the mixed doubles final from Indonesia, the number four seeds, Tonto Yachman and Liliana Natsia. Label and Camilla Ruti, your current European champions and the only European players involved here on finals day at the Yonex All England. Well, it's 17 years since Denmark won the mixed doubles title at the All England, but it's 33 years ago since an Indonesian pair took this title. What an occasion for Tantoi Akhmad, the only player on court not to have previously played in an All England final. Of course, the Danish pair were beaten finalists in 2005, thanks to Nathan Robertson and Gail Ems from England. Liliana Natsia, well, this her third All England final. Also been in three World Championship finals. But all of that was with her previous partner, Nova Widianto. Well, we knew the Danes were in good form because they won the German Open last week, their first title for 16 months. And the world ranking up two places from a week ago because of that result, up to number six in the world. And a good record for the year. For a final also of the Korean Super Series, which of course, the first Premier Super Series event in the OSIM BWF World Super Series for 2012. Well, they've had a very comfortable journey through to today's final. And when you consider that in the quarterfinal, they had to beat the number three seeds, their teammates, Joachim Fischer Nielsen and Christina Peterson, and they dispose of them in two straight games. And then if you were with us yesterday, you would have witnessed them in their semi-final against last year's champions, the number two seed, Zhu Chen and Ma Jin of China. That was incredible performance, 21-16, 21-18. So they have been in great form of late. Their opponents, the number four seeds, Tantoi, Ahmad and Liliana Natsir, of course, this new combination. They have actually been as high as number two in the world, had a total of nine weeks at number two in the middle of last year, June last year. And as I say, Liliana Natsir, well, this her third All England final, beaten finalist in 2008 and again in 2010 when she was playing with Nova Widianto. Well, they had a tough opening match against the qualifiers from Malaysia. And again in the quarterfinal against Nathan Robertson and Jenny Woolwick from England. And then yesterday in their semi-final against Chen Peng Soon and Go Liu Ying from Malaysia. Won that opening game on their fifth game point, having saved two game points prior to that, as you can see, 27-25. 47 minutes for those two games in the semi-final. It really was a very, very exciting encounter. 
So this is the third meeting between these two pairs. It shared at one apiece, but the last time they met was in the semi-final of the Indonesian last year. Two straight games, as you can see, on that occasion. So, a big, big test for Tantoi Akhmad, the only player in today's final that hasn't participated in an All England final before today. So, a big question mark is how he's going to cope with the occasion. Of course, for Liliana Natsia, twice world champion, this her third All England final, and will it be third time lucky? She's never won the title. It's been 33 years since Indonesia won the mixed doubles here at the All England. 17 years since the last Danish pair won the All England mixed doubles. Well, there's Ian Spear, Rampa from England, and Zheng Zhang Liang of China, our service judge. So umpires and service judges from all over the globe to ensure neutrality in the proceedings. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Yonex All England Open Badminton Championships Mixed Double Final between, on my right, Thomas Label, Camilla Kutuyu, Denmark. Thomas Label, a 34-year-old from Copenhagen. I thought that the way he played yesterday in the semi-final against Zhu Chen and Ma Jin, he was all over the court, and you consider he's had so many injury problems of late, and already he's willing to go forward to the net. Of course, traditionally in mixed doubles, the man uses his power from the back of the court while the women tend to be more agile and quicker and able to anticipate more at the front of the court, so that's usual, ideal formation. But I think with both these pairs, both the women are so strong in all departments of the game, we'll see it possibly more like level doubles. Especially Camilla Ruta Yule at the back of the court is actually as powerful as some of the men out on the tour. And uh, Thomas Laybourne, I think he's probably the best for male net player in the game of mix today. Here's the race for the world champions title in Hyderabad in 2009. And who did they beat in the final? And that's it. And of course, she has been with Nova Rudianto. There's the most remarkable run of results when they won that gold medal. The Danes beat the Indonesians in the final, and they were, at the time, the defending champions. Also beat the Olympic champions in the semi-final, the top Chinese pair in the quarter-final. Coaches Lars Ua and Rika also as she used to be. Rika Sigmund now. 
Well, she was in the all in the final of the women's doubles back in 1996 with Helena Kirkegor. She knows what it's all about there. The pressure of the big occasion. That was a dangerous oh. shot at the line from Thomas Laybourne. Actually a pretty bad miss. Set him up nicely. Good smash from Tantoi Ahmad. And I guess, Anthony, I know that you, when you played your All England final, you know, a great experience, but in early stages, perhaps a good thing to hit a few hard smashes and try and get the nerves and the tension out of the arm. Absolutely, I think you've got to start off just getting the legs moving. I mean, when I, I remember when I played, I was so excited about playing in all in the final that I was almost like a cat on a hot tin roof out the back there waiting to come out. And actually, I started very, very quickly. Our problem was run out of steam because almost put too much effort in, which can be the case. But one thing I've noticed early on in this game, the shuttles do seem very, very fast and the smash is going down quite easily. talk about a weakness of Camilla to Yule is that's the classic example doesn't get a feet in the right position you hit the shuttle to her very very dangerous but if you can get a twist in and turn across the net that's the weakness that's the dive from Thomas Laybourne in the end to no avail I guess part of the reason why Camilla Ruta Yule struggles sometimes you were saying with the twisting and turning is because she is such a tall lady. 183, that's about six foot and very tall. Probably the tallest female athlete on the tour. That's what makes moving around the court very, very difficult. Of course, we can't have all the skills in the world. You know, she is an incredibly technical player, reads the game very, very well, got a great serve, a great return. But if the one flaw that she does have, she can't get down to those low shots. idea It's in the middle of that one at the end, that was the confusion. Thomas Lehman always looking to cover the centre of the court. On that occasion, they've both gone for the same shot. from the Danish pair, Thomas Lehmann, just taking the pace out, not giving the opponents any pace to really feed off, just forcing the mistake. So fast onto that third shot. Serve return and third shot, absolutely critical in doubles. You can't really understand why, you know, a player of uh, Camilla Rutuyul's ability on the tape, you know, with somebody of the skill of Liliana Natsi, she's got to be twisting and turning at every single time. Don't give her a chance to settle. 
And another example there, straight to her. Didn't really have to move to it, uses her reach on top of the net. Would she not be better on the return of serve Liliana Natsia to try and use the mid-court area a bit more, try and get it past her? It's an absolutely great shot in mixed doubles, you know, to get it going downwards to the side of the court so that the male has to come up and lift away, and then you're straight away on the attack. Missed it. Yes, does at times tend to be a little bit ambitious with his choice of shot. Tantoi Ahmad. Can often be the case with a lot of the Indonesian doubles players. Got all the agility in the world, get up there, believe they can hit any shot they could possibly think of. On that occasion, the smash to the middle was a big gap between the two players. Attendance out, mopping up the perspiration. Four straight points for the Danes. Oh, good defence. She's sending a message all right, isn't she? Wants to be very aggressive at the net. You can never fault Camilla at you for commitment. I mean, the feet are in totally the wrong position, but she was going for that no matter what. One of the contributing factors that I've just noticed in the last four or five points is the speed of Thomas Leibourne around the court now, looking to get involved all the time. That's a sign of a great mix player. Oh, my goodness. Oh, she's hit that one long, but got herself out of trouble initially. With the most extraordinary shot. But the psychological advantage. And it's definitely worth the Indonesians. It's amazing how much difference just one point, having the advantage at the mid-game interval, you you feel that you know you're on your way, whereas yeah. if you're always playing catch up. It is amazing how one yeah, point can make it a difference. It's almost as though you've won at least the first half of the game. You know, you feel great that, right, we're in the lead, halfway, we're better to obviously be in the lead than be behind. Like I say, just one point in it, but it can be such an advantage. Watching him yesterday. Thought that there was occasions that Ahmad was losing his concentration. He's very ambitious, isn't he? And sometimes perhaps a little overconfident, and it allows opponents back into the match. I think you've got to have that variation. Obviously, he's gone for a, a very wide serve, and uh, but he just rushed it so much. I mean, didn't take any time. He just walked up and hit it. Oh, that's a clever serve from Liliana Natsia. From Monado and Mir Sulawesi, a 26 year old. Something we spoke about yesterday's match 
not just serving to the tee to Camilla Rutuyo. That's her strength. Keep it away from that forehand. Oh, that's great vision and real confusion in the Danish camp. Applied by Tantoi Akmat. Did have a remarkable run in the middle of last year. The Indonesians reach four consecutive finals, winning three consecutive titles. India Super Series, Malaysia Grand Prix, and also the Singapore Super Series title, and then in their fourth consecutive final, lost in the final of Indonesia. But a run like that is what took them to number two in the world rankings. Oh, that's landed well in. Look how far up the court she is on this, though. Camilla Rutuyo is so powerful overhead, but you know, that's it. Steps in so early, it's almost like she's smashing the smash back. Yeah, she reads the game so well, doesn't she? She's got great anticipation, sees the spaces, and never seems to panic on court. Whoa, whoa. Oh, that's been pushed long. And now a run of six straight points for the Indonesians. placement of the smash, it wasn't just the power. 18, 12. Oh, applying the pressure at exactly the right time, the Indonesians, they've upped the intensity, they've looked to be aggressive, and the reward is a six-point advantage. 260. That's 162 miles per hour. That's what she was doing in the early stages. That's Ruta Yule at her best. But on that occasion, the feet went as well. You know, you've got to hit with the feet. It's something I was always told when I was playing. If you want to play the good shots, your feet have got to be in the right position. On that occasion, feet moved tremendously. Notice on the defence in the last few points, the feet very static. And if anything, jumping backwards, which then sends the shuttle in the wrong directions. Once again, proving the importance of the control from the front of the court, the serve, 14, third shot. 18. Terrible lift from Tantari Ahmed, and he gave Thomas Label almost a free hit. their players on. Oh. Well, it got the advantage. It'd been a wonderful flick serve. Gets Tantoi Ahmad off balance. And now the number four seeds just two points away from this opening game. A good flick serve from the Indonesians. 20, game point, 14. Easy put away for Liliana Nazia. And six opportunities for the Indonesians to close out this opening game. Oh, that was courage to leave a low That's serve. Her. Goodness me. 15, Oh, 
very, very good awareness from Thomas Laybourne. Played deep into the forehand corner. Mad very late to react. Still another four game point opportunities for the Indonesians, though. Trying to block the shuttle and get forward to the nets. 17, 20. <laughs> oh, the error on the low serve from Camilla Eruta Yul gifting the game points. And the opening game to the Indonesians. 21-17 confirms the umpire. And the Indonesians, well, I wonder whether Ahmad would cope with the nerves. He certainly has. Jeg synes godt i returneringerne, at vi må køre ned til ham også, men så skal vi bare stoppe den næste. Altså ligesom mod de andre indboer fra Tyskland, vi skal, være, vi skal stoppe først, fordi så kommer du ind i den næste hele tiden. Okay? Så skal du ligge og lure på, om hun holder kort eller hun spiller ind over. Men vi skal give slip og være frække og stole på, at Bare lige sætte jer igennem en gang imellem, ikke? Ja. Det er der fint stoppende på forbanen. Der er plads på den, ikke? Lars Ua, using all of his allotted time to talk to his players, and the one thing he was telling them to do, you've got to stop it first, play the block. Get Camilla Rotiul to go forward to the net. Felt that they were playing too many drives from the midcourt area. But I think, Anthony, what was really interesting to me was that the Indonesian coaches, both of them, came onto court and they spent all of their time talking to this man. Liliana Natsia, they just left on her own. She has so much experience, they know what she can do, and I think they just think that he just needs to step up to the plate and just show them what he's capable of. Well, he certainly did in the opening game. I had real question marks about how he would cope with the big occasion. But he cooked very well indeed. Oh. Well, there's nerves all round, and I'm actually wondering whether it's the Danes that are more nervous, and perhaps especially Thomas Labor just wide because of course at the age of 34 he probably realizes this is his last opportunity and when you know your number of opportunities are running out that's adds to the pressure it's like the golfer getting the yips on the putting isn't it it tends to be the older golfers oh that's wonderful play from Lilian and that's it that just shows the kind of racket skills she possesses. Very, very few women in the world can play that cross-court net shot with so much skill. And so relaxed on the net kill with the thumb power that she puts through the racket. Just going back to the serving, all four players have very, very good serves, but also all four players are very, very good on the returner serve. I think that's what's adding those elements of nerves in there, that unless it's a perfect one, they know they're going to be punished. I think Thomas Laybourne's struggling more than all the others with that so far. Oh. 
Just long. Mm, it was only just. Oh, superb interception from Tentoi Ahmad. So ready at the net on that occasion. You know, both of these male players are you know, pouncing onto anything that comes through them. You know, they're ready for everything. They're not worried that their female partners are at the back. They've got good power. They're waiting for anything. about the serving they're all so worried it's not only the nerves they're all so aware of how good their opponents are determined to play the perfect serve oh, well that just proves the quality of the returns seem to just brush across the feathers there it takes so much skill to be able to almost tickle across the feathers it's you know, for players who not sure how to return. That was a perfect example. Oh! Off balance. Camilla Arutiul as she tried to play that shot. Six, three. Gone for far too much here. I'd say leaning away, feet not in line with the shuttle. No chance that was ever going to be a winner. It's a super play by the Indonesians. And the Danes, the European champions, are looking more and more panicky in a way. Santawi Ahmad, you know, the one player we thought would be more nervous than anybody else. He's moving so quickly around the court now. He's totally dominating from all areas. But we do know from his quarter-final against Nathan Robertson and Jenny Woolworth that he can suddenly lose that focus and concentration. So as far as the Danes are concerned, they've got us hang in there. Oh, oh my goodness me. It's amazing how when one of you starts hitting a few serves in the net, how it can catch on. You know, you're almost worried that you need to then do the perfect serves all the time because you need to gain your points on your serve, and uh, it's catching. Yeah, extra pressure. Well, that's nicely played. Fantastic. It's exactly what we're talking about with the return of serve. You know, players will practice over and over again trying to hit that net cord. You know, of course, we can call it luck at times, but when you do it so many times in a match, it just becomes quality. Oh, it's called cool. good. The Danes can't believe the call. Label hands on hips. Well, the crowd here, I think, have just seen it on the giant screen. Oh, cool, good. Must have clipped the outside edge of the line. It's always interesting to me to see how players react to 
what they believe is injustice of a line call or another official decision. And if they react in the right way and use that anger and aggression to their advantage, it certainly appeared that way as far as Thomas Laybourne was concerned. Great vision, very, very quick around the courts, Tantui Ahmad. The Danes at the moment, they're not sure whether it's a play to the net, play to the mid-court area or play to the back, because whatever they're trying seems to be pounced on by the Indonesians. They really have brought their A game to the court today. You know, the movement from Tantawi Ahmed is really unsettling the Danish pair, and they feel like they've almost got to play the perfect shot every single time, and they're just not getting away with it. Well, she's been on the losing end of two previous New England finals this year, and that's it. But the way she and her new young partner are playing at the moment, it's a question of whether they can keep that form going. to me. Twelve, six. Well, it's time for the European Seven. champions to react. Twelve. They want to win this final. And to do that, they've got to Take this second game, they've got to find their form from somewhere. Well, threw in the flick serve, didn't trust his low serve. Just got to try everything now. You, you know, as far as them are concerned, they will be thinking, well, unless we do something special, we're not going to win this match. So they've just got to throw caution to the wind and just have a go at anything. Try to unsettle the Indonesians. The flick serve. And more success. Great tactics. Well, the short serve's not been working at all. At least the flick serve gets them into the rally. And Thomas Labour does have a very deceptive flick. So it's a great way to play. Get the Indonesians away from the net. They're losing all the rallies in and around the net, so use something else. This is fastest smash of the match so far. That's a good return. Yeah, the flatter smash towards the left shoulder of the left-hander. Very clever placement. It was a great return of serve. One steep smash, and then the flatter one. Mixing up the pace, mixing up the angles. Very, very clever play. Oh. That's brilliant from Thomas Laybourne. The ability to be able to jump forward into a shot and then reverse slice a drive takes so much control. You know, a lot of people don't realise the amount of finger work that goes into badminton. You know, you grip the racket too hard, enables you to not be able to use the fingers. Oh. Thomas Labour with very, very soft hands. Yeah, well constructed rally. Yeah, there goes the clicking again from Coach Lars Ua. He prefers to click his fingers rather than clap. Very much a Danish. That. Oh, it's gone along. 
Well, it's an overrule by the umpire, Ian Spear. He says the shuttle was good, and indeed it was. Great piece of umpiring. 12, 13. And now there's just one point in it. She's not the tallest of players, 168, that's just over five foot six, but my goodness, she places the shuttle so well. Here, the smash from her across court, playing it deep. from Camilla Rutiu, Tom Slaver on it, a fantastic drive, straight back there, in she goes. That's when they're at their best, when they've got Camilla Rutiu going forwards and being aggressive. the right idea I think Tantoi Akmad was backing off from the net there was a gap 15, 13. yep and all four players taking the opportunity to take on board some liquid yeah. well, there were six points adrift at one stage at 6 12 down the European champions. Totally different scenario now. They can believe in it. Yeah, good angle. Very short lifting though. Miller to you all very tall, got to get her on the back line. You know, she's got a very, very powerful smash in this steep angle, but only from three quarter court. That is incredible. Angle and power leapt up in the air, did Tantoi Ahmad. Wonderful. Placement of the smash. <laughs> well, adopting the crouch defense position rather than moving her feet and defending normally from the mid-court area. I wasn't sure if she was supposed to go back. 15, very, very strange situation there. You know, you're always taught as a mixed doubles player that the man needs to be at the back attacking. You know, there should have been no question there. Tantanoyakma should have jumped round that and attacked straight away. Instead, the confusion.
got to really question the placement of the smash. I mean, it's straight down the middle to Thomas Laybourne. He'll make that kind of shot all day long. In all fairness, I think he moved an extra pace towards the centre of the court to help his partner out, realising that Camilla Ruta Yule's defence in the last half a dozen rallies or so has been found wanting. One point in it. Oh, tremendous again from the youngster. Not the best serve in the world, but what a fantastic return to serve. Right deep into the corner, 18, making a huge gap, even with the dive of Thomas Label and just can't get there. away from the title the Indonesians oh. Oh. Yeah, real pressure this time he was a little bit hesitant at the net a couple of rallies ago, that time very positive, hunting the shuttle. 19, Just have to look how far up the court he is. Brilliant anticipation. Just expected his smash, it was just going to straighten the floor. 19. No, I always think it's the delicate touch shots that go when you're nervous. It's not easy yet to hit the shuttle hard. Trying to drop shot, showed the nerves. And that one too. Wonderful anticipation of the third shot. This is where the Danish are normally so good. Clinical. And the umpire just having a word with Tantali Akhmad. It was the correct call. Championship points. Good serve. Christian and Amelda won the All England Mixed Doubles title in 1979. Disappointment for the Danes. Well, all the question marks I had about Tantoi Akhmad's temperament and how he would deal with the nerves. He responded quite brilliantly. And helped by his partner, the experience of Liliana Nazi, and for her, 
It is third time lucky, having lost two previous All England finals with her previous partner, Nova Widianto. This time, she is the champion. Heartache for the Danes, a second All England defeat for them. Their first in 2005, but the moment of victory. And the Indonesians have champions at the All England once again. Well, the delight of the coaches, the delight of the players. And the Indonesians, well, this, their eighth title, their third Super Series title, but their first ever Premier Super Series title. And there's how they did it. Yeah, it's okay. I try, I try. Okay. We'll just say thank you to your fans, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Okay. We're going to try, yes. Congratulations to Tontari Ahmad and Liliana Natsir of Indonesia, the mixed doubles champions at the Yonex All England Open Badminton Championships. Now, Liliana, you only speak a little English, so we'll keep this very simple. What would you like to say? to all your supporters here at the National Indoor Arena. Yeah, uh, I want to say thank you for support from Indonesia. Uh, then I'm totally very happy today I, I can be the champion of all England. Congratulations and well done to Tommy Ahmad, Liliana Natsir. So Liliana Natsir, well, she's very popular on the tour. Always very friendly player to us in the media and Always time for her fans, and what an occasion for her. Last year, this Indonesian pair were beaten in the second round. A year on, they are the champions in only their second appearance at the All England together. Well, we all knew that Liliana Natsia playing with Nova Woodyanto were a sensational pair. A lot of people questioned whether Tantoi Akhmad was a suitable replacement. That has been proved more than competent replacement. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now time for the presentations for the Onyx All England Open Badminton Championships Mixed Doubles. To make the presentations, please welcome Ben Yoniyama, President of Yonix, and Jeff Roof, President of Badminton England. This marks the 102nd Championship and the 29th consecutive year of Yonix sponsorship, making it one of the longest partnerships in sporting history. Badminton England would also like to extend its sincere thanks and appreciation to Yonex for its continued support. We're also privileged to be part of the OSIM BWF World Super Series as a premier event. To thank our officials, Jeff Rofe, President of Badminton England, will now award commemorative medals to the umpire Ian Spear of England and his service judge Zheng Sanliang of China. Ladies and gentlemen, our runners-up in the mixed doubles from Denmark, Thomas Leiborn and Camilla Ritter Yule. Well, the disappointment is obvious. But I have to say that 
their form this week and certainly last week when they won the German Open resembling the sort of form that took them to the world title. And when you consider all the injury problems that Thomas Leiborn has struggled with over the last 12 months, he really has done very well this week. But that will be no... Yeah, looks towards his fans, can't raise a smile. They came as the number four seeds, they leave as the champions. Tantoi Akmar and Liliana Natsia. Mr. Ben Yoniyama, president of Yonex Company, presents them with champagne. Eighth title. Their first ever Premier Super Series title. the Indonesians will take their lap of honour.
So that's our first two finals completed. Next up, women's doubles. Then we'll have the men's doubles and finally the men's singles and the women's doubles. Next on court, the number one and two seeds. The defending champions, Wang Xiaoli and Yu Yang up against the number two seeds, Tian Qing and Zhao Yunlei.